we've talked about reaction rates now. We've talked about the cell's metabolism, all of the uh, building up and breaking down of components of the cell, of, of, of materials in the cell. So catabolic reactions and anabolic reactions, endergonic reactions and exergonic reactions, and so on. Um, we focused in on hydrolysis and condensation synthesis or dehydration reactions as sort of our models that we're looking at. In the last mini lecture, we talked, um, well, the last two mini lectures, we talked about how enzymes can speed up these processes by lowering activation energy. And we talked about how the reactants in one reaction become products. And then those products can become the reactants of the next reaction to create chains of reactions throughout the cell. But we ran into a problem. They were entirely unregulated. You could just turn it on and you know, I don't know, turn on a catabolic set of reactions, and they would just keep breaking things down until everything was broken down. And you don't want everything in the cell broken down, or you die. So we're going to start going into how we can regulate metabolic pathways and recycle macromolecules. All right, so now we have all these reactions happening, but we can't have them happen all at once all the time. We need to regulate them. We need to make sure the right reaction turns on at the right time. And there are three ways, <laughs> threes, right? Three ways of regulating a metabolic pathway. Genetic regulation, cellular regulation, biochemical regulation. Genetic regulation is manipulating the DNA directly. DNA produces RNA. The RNA goes on to produce a, a polypeptide. If you can turn the DNA off, you've stopped the whole reaction from happening. By turning off the DNA directly, you stop the entire metabolic pathway that it runs. If I wanted to turn off the lights in this room, there are a few ways I could do it, all of which are equally effective. What's one way? That's true. You can unscrew them. I could turn the light switch off. You know, I appreciate your creative thought, but that would have been my for the you know, light switch. Uh, another one is I could turn off the power to the whole building. I could just shut the whole thing off. That would be like manipulating the DNA, turning off the master switch. Or I could break things, I guess. You know, that's cool. Unscrew them, which is less breaking because then I could reuse them. Like, the, oh, back to battery. So genetic regulation is directly interacting with the DNA. Cellular regulation has to deal with the membrane. It's all about if the cellular regulation is um, being regulated by a signal coming in from the outside. A pathway won't turn on until you get a signal from outside of the cell. And that signal from outside then interacts with a, um, with a pathway on the inside. It starts a process. Cellular regulation is also compartmentalization. Where do you build most of your ATP? What organelle is responsible for that? It's the mitochondrion. It's compartmentalized. That's where it happens. It's a specialized area. And you give it a very special environment so it happens. How about your hydrolysis reactions? Where are most of your hydrolysis reactions? Or your, um, where are things broken down in the cell? Nope. The, these things, they'd happen in the cytosol, but where's, what's like the recycling organelle? The lysosome. So the lysosome is going to have a very specialized environment. It's got all of these um, hydrogen ions in there and these acid hydrolases. The rest of the cell doesn't have that. Right, it cleans up the cell. So that's compartmentalization. Those things all happen in one area. That's called cellular regulation. And then you have biochemical regulation. With biochemical regulation, this can be run through either feedback inhibition or uh, controlling a rate limiting step. I like feedback. Feedback inhibition is the idea that a product later on in a um, pathway can interact with an earlier step so that that product is no longer being made. So if you have uh, that orange to purple to blue to red. That red will interact and act as an inhibitor, say, to the um, enzyme between orange and purple. So now that orange is no longer becoming purple, so you don't have much more red made. 
So if you have high concentrations of red, you don't need any more red, so it stops the process. Um, oh, you know, okay, so there's a series on like the learning channel where there's a family that had like a thousand and one kids. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No. Not like a thousand, it was like 20 something. Yeah, but I forgot the. Yeah. There was like 21 and counting, something like that. They, they had a ton of kids. Right, they kept, they kept, they stopped counting because there were too many kids. Okay, so here's the way it works. You have the mom. She produces a kid, a baby, who becomes a child, who becomes an adult, right? They're still producing a bunch of kids while that one is going through these different stages. Now, this adult decides they don't want to have any more brothers and sisters. So they go back and they slip their mom some birth control, right? So that stops the process. Does that make sense? Like, here, try these Tic Tacs. Um, it stops the whole process so that that doesn't kill all the kids that are in the, in, in already being uh, through the system, right? They still grow up to become adults, but now we've stopped the process back to the beginning. That's called negative feedback. Positive feedback is going to go in the other direction, though. You produce a, um, a final product that interacts positively with the beginning. It speeds up the reaction. It might be a catalyst. If that's the case, you have same idea, mom, kid, uh, teen, adult. The adult says, uh, figures out a way to convince their mom to get fertility treatment. Well, now she's churning out even more kids. It's going even faster. So you have positive and negative feedback, where one step is interacting with another. It all comes down to regulating that, uh, these steps. The only step that matters that you regulate is what's termed the rate limiting step. There is one step that will be the one that sort of controls the pace of the whole thing. By controlling the speed of the rate limiting step, you control the overall reaction. If you were to make burgers, what is the rate limiting step of making burgers? What is the slowest part of making burgers? Grilling the patty, making the meat, right? It's really easy to throw out a bunch of buns, just chuck them on the counter. Add, you know, take the mayonnaise and mustard and just go like that. You can do that really quickly, but each of those burgers takes a finite and defined amount of time to cook. If you were able to speed up how fast you put out buns, would that speed up how many burgers you could make? No. What matters is if you could speed up how fast you cook the burgers. They are the rate limiting step. If I made you stay in lab until all of the lab groups were done, it doesn't, I, I know, don't, don't groan about it. Um, the, the one that was slowest would be the rate limiting step. It doesn't matter how fast the other ones get, <laughs> it doesn't matter how fast all the other groups get done. What matters is how fast the last one gets done. So if you speed them up, you speed up the whole reaction. OK, so we've got to recycle these things. Most molecules, except for DNA, get recycled really quickly, because you don't want them to build up. Um, take like mRNA. mRNA's whole job in life is to take a, a, a plan from the nucleus to the ribosome. After that, you don't want to keep it around. It's like hoarding things. You guys seen the show on hoarders? Yeah. Usually it's like crazy old cat lady, or they, they've stored all these newspapers. What happens to their house? It becomes a maze. They run out of room in there. It's all filled. The cell can't abide that. You cannot have that happening because the cell will eventually break down without space. Um, and you've got so much energy tied up in those macromolecules, so you have to recycle them. So, at, oh, here's another quote from you guys who were good at that Gadsby quote. What do you do with a general when he stops being a general? Where is that from? Do you know? It's not from a commercial. <laughs> no, it's actually from White Christmas. <laughs> Bing Crosby. No, have you guys seen White Christmas? You know what I'm talking about? No, okay, that's then never mind. Those different generation. What? Where? Nice. I appreciate how you set up for that too. All right, so you got to get rid of this RNA. 
RNA is what kind of macromolecule? What kind of macromolecule? There are four kinds of macromolecules. What are they? Proteins are one. What are the other three? Carbohydrates, another. Fa uh, lipids, three. One more. We got protein already. Nucleic acid. So what is the monomer of the nucleic acid? The nucleotide. Well done. She's good, yeah. So that mRNA is broken down by an enzyme called an exonuclease. It's going to cut one nucleotide off and then another and another and another. One at a time. It speeds up hydrolysis reactions. Exonuclease. Exo, so you're cutting it off. Cutting it out. Yeah, of uh, nucleotides. So it just cuts off these um, nucleotides one at a time. Cool thing is that doesn't happen fast enough. So what the cell does is it builds a complex of a whole bunch of exonuclease. So if one was cutting things fairly uh, efficiently, you get a bunch of them together, and you build what's called an exosome. And an exosome will utterly devour a nucleotide. It sort of starts on one side and just chomps its way down. So that cuts up mRNA and releases a whole bunch of nucleotides. RNA goes in one side, nucleotides come out the back, and that lets you build more RNA with less effort. So that gets rid of RNA. Proteins are another thing that builds up in high supply. So we've got to get rid of those. In order to cut up a protein, you're going to use what's called a protease. Please do not call it a protease. It's spelled that way. I know. It's a protease. So you cut the peptide bonds between amino acids. And if you get a whole bunch of proteases together, you get what's called a proteasome. And a proteasome will start on one side of a, of a uh, polypeptide and start spinning its way like a buzzsaw down it, hacking off amino acids. So you've got exosomes and exonuclease that break down nucleotides, proteasomes and proteases that um, break down proteins. So once that ubiquitin binds, um, an exosome or a proteasome will bind to the ubiquitin and devour the molecule. Sometimes you have to get rid of a whole organelle. You have to recycle a whole organelle. A mitochondria gone rogue. Because mit mitochondria are going to um, independently reproduce. So if you've got a bad one, you want to get rid of it. Otherwise, it's going to produce a whole bunch of bad ones. So what you do is you form a vesicle around that bad organelle, and then you bind a lysosome to it. The lysosome does its work, breaking it down. If you don't get rid of bad organelles, there are consequences. They might go on to reproduce. That's how we get Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is caused by um, the cell not being able to get rid of broken mitochondria. Those broken mitochondria reproduce, and they reproduce, and they reproduce. And because of that, that's why with Huntington's disease, you have all sorts of issues with energy. Uh, lots of shaking. Energy in the cells is way off. So you have to get rid of broken organelles in order for the body to continue working or the cell to continue working effectively and um, functionally. So there we go all about how to regulate metabolic pathways. We talked about three ways of, metabolic, of regulating metabolic pathways. Genetic regulation, uh, which is you could increase or decrease the rates of transcription uh, and, and translation. Cellular regulation, where it's where you can compartmentalize where the reaction happens. You can make sure that only reactions happen in certain areas. And biochemical regulations, where you can control the different steps of the process. Uh, the most common type of that bio 
biochemical regulation is negative feedback. We use negative feedback a lot in our endocrine system. That's where a product of the process uh, goes back to an earlier point in the process and inhibits the stages. So it's not going back in time. It's acting on the current process that's still ongoing. Uh, and we also talked about controlling the rate limiting step. If you could speed up the slowest step, then the whole reaction might occur easier. From there, we moved into discussing how to recycle macromolecules, uh, how to break these macromolecules into their in individual constituent monomers and release energy. Proteins, as we know, are made up of polypeptides, which are the individual mon monomer of which is the amino acid, otherwise known as a peptide. To break down proteins, we can use proteases. Proteases specifically cleave or cut the peptide bond between different amino acids. And if you get a whole bunch of proteases together, you can form a structure called a proteasome, which is a very efficient way of breaking down a bunch of proteins. Nucleic acids function a similar structure, except instead of proteases, they're broken down by exonucleases. They break or cleave the bonds between um, the different amino, I'm sorry, the different nucleotides. And if you get a whole bunch of exonucleases together, they can form exosomes. Now that's some macromolecules breaking down into individual monomers, but sometimes the cell needs to break down bigger parts of itself. Um, an entire organelle, for instance, uh, like a mitochondria may need to be broken down. To do that, the cell forms a vesicle around the organelle, and then the lysosome will attach. Remember, the lysosome will recycle macromolecules by increasing the rate of hydrolysis using acid hydrolases. And that process of surrounding an organelle with a vesicle and then attaching a lysosome is known as autophagy. So we got to have the right amount of proteins or the right amount of, of macromolecules in the cell at the right time, and we have to regulate that using these different pathways. These are the content review questions uh, to focus your studies for this mini lecture. Coming up, we're going to do an application of these cellular metabolic processes. We're going to look at a, a fairly complex one that I hope to break down into discrete chunks for you um, with aerobic cellular respiration. And then we'll look at another process after that with photosynthesis. So you've learned the basics with cellular metabolism. Now we're just going to apply those basics to do two very specific and vital processes that occur within the cell. Stay tuned to it. I hope to make it through. I wish you luck.